ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Masters of Ceremonies, Linda Dorsina Fori and Tom Tinlin. I know, I don't know where they are, we'll find it. Wow, wasn't that nice? That's so nice. That's so, so nice. nice, thank you, table five or I six. Or every, <laughs> for, for, hey, can we ask everybody to come in and grab their seat? Joe Carroll, that means you. Have a seat, thank you. Yeah, we will. Not yet. They, they're going to do Thank you. Thank you. Let's get built. Joe here. Sullivan, you're no longer mayor of anything. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tommy Butler, good to see you. Wow. Oh, wow. Everyone got this so quiet. Great. I know. We didn't have to shush. Yeah, we're supposed to have cordless mics up here. I don't, I don't know what happened to that, but they, they don't okay. try. Oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, how about the, 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 the music, huh? Let's say hi, hi to Sean and, and Kalina. Thank them so much for, for all the help today. Uh, my name's Tom Tinlin. I'm gonna be your, your co-host and your co-master of ceremonies from the South Boston Tinlins. Uh, 2017 Boston Irish Honors recipient. That's right. Woo! Thank Give you it for up that for Tommy. of Come applause. <laughs> So it's hard to believe we're back here for our 13th year, Linda. Oh, 13 Thir years. Go Amazing. figure. Go figure. So you might notice that uh, we've doubled in size this year because this crowd gets so rowdy that it takes two people to, to pull this thing off. <laughs> and we were trying to outnumber the Roonies 11 to 11 to 1. So, you know, we, we figured, what the hell? Um, so welcome, everybody. It's great to be here. My friend, the co-host of 2023 Boston Irish Honors, Linda Dorsina Forey. Nice round of applause for Linda. We stay together, Tom. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to be here with Tommy. We're back together again, right? Woo! Woo! Okay. <laughs> so when I hosted, I got to say this. When I hosted the St. Patrick's Day breakfast, and I was the state senator, and I did it for four years, and Tommy was one of the folks in at the table with Bill and everyone for us to get these jokes going. So we're I'm so grateful to be up here. No with jokes him. today, though. No so jokes. No jokes. Won't we're, be keeping it real. we're keeping it real. Um, but we have a great program for you today, and some amazing honorees and stories to tell, because that's the mission behind this family-owned and run newspaper company, and you all know this. And we thank you for being here with us again. Um, and so we're really honored to have you here. On your seats is the newspaper, right, that Boston Irish Honors um, Production I want you to read the stories. They're quite incredible as we recognize um, these amazing families. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with that, as we always do, um, Tom Kennedy is going to lead us in prayer. He's right here. Oh, he's right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Kennedy. After that introduction, we really need prayer. He's not wrong. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, creator, sustainer, and redeemer, the author of our salvation, we thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of this day. We thank you for having given us not tasks equal to our powers, but powers equal to our tasks for strength and courage, faith and hope, to lift up others less fortunate than ourselves so that they may come to know of your grace and love. We thank you for this gathering today of Boston Irish Honors especially for those individuals to whom we give praise and honor, for Vincent Crotty and Karen Jordan, Governor Maura Haley and the Rooney family, as we recognize them for their accomplishments, may their lives of service and generosity inspire others to extend their reach beyond their grasp that we all may live lives of service, caring for those less fortunate than ourselves. Grant that by today's gathering, 
we may be of strength in our purpose and resolve to serve one another. And let us pause just for a moment to remember dear friends and colleagues who have gone before. We especially remember today Dick Flavin, Joe Leary, and Brian O'Donovan, all of whom contributed to our common life in this community. We give you thanks for those lives drawn from far off shores, for our freedom to assemble, to speak freely, and the great responsibility to vote. A gift so precious that we must never take it for granted. So that as you hold us to account for the use of our powers and privileges, guide us in ways that the rights of all may be protected and our nation enabled to fulfill its purpose. And as we ask your blessing, O oh God, on this food we are about to partake, we ask it also on those who prepared it and serve it, while always remembering those who go without and our commitment to feed them as well. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Tom Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him. Man, after that, <laughs> that was, uh, where do you go from there? Jesus. So go ahead, Linda, you're up. Okay, so we are, again, excited to once again offer a great raffle prize. Um, this is a great room, by the way, because we didn't have to shush when we said we're starting. This is quite amazing. Um, we have an, uh, a raffle prize at today's luncheon, and thanks to our friends at Delta, Airlines, the winner will get two round trip tickets to Ireland. Delta's Charlie Shuey is here, um, who's gonna join us later on um, to present the awards. We also have a terrific bundle of tickets from the Red Sox, so thank you Red Sox. Four tickets on top of the Green Monster along with a pregame tour of Fenway next season. So if you haven't already entered your name, please do so, there's a bowl or a box outside at the sign-in table, just drop your card or your name and we'll be able to get that done. Um, we hope to pull out the winners at the end. So we, uh, who, who else is here? We have, is Senator Markey here yet? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Who else do we have? We have Joe Sullivan, who's here? Mayor Joe, where are you, Our Joe? Mayor. Michael Flaherty, Michael Flaherty is here, city councilor, soon to be retired. <laughs> well soon to be no longer city councilor. I should not say retired. The, um, who else do we have? Ed Forey is here. Let's hear it for Ed, right? Yeah. Not only is he the founder of this event, he's also the founder of the reporter, the Boston Irish. It happens to be, you know, you're going to find this hard to believe, Linda's father-in-law. So, yeah, that, that explains quite a bit. Uh, we have our past honorees here. Um, we have, uh, so anybody who is a past honoree, raise your hand and say hello. Look at this, look at this. Giant amongst the masses. Giants among the masses. So as you can tell, this is our first year doing this together. So my script is different than hers because I'm lazy and I looked at mine this morning and Linda was editing hers you know, diligently. So we'll, we'll get through it. So just give us a little bit of time. We will, but I want to recognize as a former elected, I have to recognize a former elected, the honorable, um, I'm going to say his name, but last night he held an event where 1,500 people attended, did an incredible 1700, job. 1,700, according Seven, to him. 1,700, according to him, and that's the Honorable James T. Brett. All right. Jimmy Brett. Jimmy Brett. Come on. I know that uh, former Senator Paul Kirk is here. Yes, Paul, Senator Paul Kirk. Are? Yes, Stan. Over yes, here. There he is. So um, we do want to have, uh, we want to acknowledge our co-chairs, right? So Brendan Feeney and Bill Kennedy. Let's hear it for, for Brendan and Bill. Yeah. 
I would like Bill to come on up and uh, say a couple of words. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, and welcome everybody to the 2023 uh, Irish Honors Awards. Uh, I want to thank uh, Maureen and Linda and Bill and Ed Forey for asking me to be a co-chairman, and I want to recognize uh, Brendan Feeney, uh, who uh, co-chaired the event with me, and the Feeneys have been very generous over the years to fit this event every year, and of course, they really epitomize, I think, the the purpose of these awards is to recognize our Irish heritage and tell a story about uh, people's lives and, and how they've lived it. And of course, the Feenies are successful here with their excavation company and of course, never forget their roots in Ireland. So thank you, Brendan, for co-chairing uh, with me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and also thank you to the, the host committee uh, every year we have put together a great committee of, uh, of uh, men and women and uh, we have fun getting together and uh, uh, talking about the honorees and talking about the event. And uh, we really, uh, we have a nice group of people every year who, who Ed and Bill put, put together to, uh, to help them put this event together. It really is a, a great event to, to celebrate. And you, the minute I walked in today, you know, you saw so many, I saw so many familiar faces who I haven't seen in a while, uh, I may only see it at this event. And, it, and every time um, I come to events now, you just really realize how much we have missed uh, getting together and, and sharing our friendship over the last couple of years. And uh, it was just great to walk in and, and hear. Uh, you can tell when someone knows me a long time when they call me Billy. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not used to being a 69-year-old Billy, but I guess that's the way it's going to be. But it's just a wonderful... So I thank the Fouries for bringing us all together and to celebrate that, that, uh, that friendship. But uh, it's just a, a good afternoon, and I thank you all for, uh, for uh, supporting this event. I want to thank the honorees, the governor, and uh, uh, Vincent Crotty and Karen, and, of course, uh, the Rooney family who were who are friends of mine, and Anne-Marie and my daughter, Nora, and uh, that, uh, that's a great story in itself, which we could be here a long time telling, but uh, it's just a beautiful story, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Mrs. Rooney is, is a wonderful person who I actually met in the State House over 20, over 20 years ago. And so, again, thank you. Have a good afternoon, and again, thanks for supporting this event. Thank you very much. Check. Hey, Bill Kennedy, let's hear it for him once again. You want to acknowledge somebody? Yes, I do. want to acknowledge another leader um, among us, former state senator, has done a lot of work um, on behalf of our city and our state, and that's Senator Paul White, everyone. Come on. Woo! We got our landlord, John Drew, is here. Let's, so let's everybody, you know, don't, don't put your cigarettes out in the carpet. So... After lunch, we're going to change the tone. We're going to change the tenor. We're going to have some fun. Everybody enjoy your lunch. We'll see you all in about a half an hour. Be well. <laughs> all right, folks. Everybody have a seat. Everybody have a seat. So, folks, we have a, um, any, everybody here familiar with the show Dairy Girls? Yeah, Dairy Girls. It's a, it's a gr great show, great show. So, we're going to start our next segment. Shh. No, it's all right, Jim. You're getting an award. We, we, we got all day. No, seriously. You, you good? All right. So, we're going to start our next segment with a, uh, with, with a video um, brought to you by our friends at Dairy Girls. 
You look at the mon wow, that's a big head. Look, oh, Jesus. Where, stop it. Where's the fil Wow. Dairy Girls. Ah, it's so great to be back in Northern Ireland. So what is the plan? So I was thinking that we should just start off with all the faves. Take in the views. Oh, Chris Duncan! Old stuff. Even older stuff. Lobster lunch. <laughs> Giant's Causeway. Take in a bit of art. Stunning. Inspirational. Go for a walk on the Peace Bridge. Finish it off with a nice bag of chips off the old city walls. Absolutely cracker. Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Let's hear it for Derry Girls. We want to thank the tourism it's of Ireland for that. <laughs> it's like being up here with my wife now, right? Everything I'm about to say is okay, good. Yeah, no, good, good. Was that good? You're the doing tourism a great job. thank great you. Job. Thank great you job. very much. Linda. Okay, everyone, um, what a beautiful video. We have a number of honorees, past honorees here with us today. And we ask the past honorees to please stand up or to wave your hands. We want to recognize you as a past Boston Irish Honors recipient. Come on, Jimmy, you could stand. There they are. All right. Well done. Woo! Well done. Okay, stand. There it is. There it is. All there right. Is. All right. <laughs> it gives the rest of them something to strive for, doesn't it? Though? See, that, that's who you want to be. A middle-aged what? No, 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 no. I also want to give a special shout out to one of last year's honorees um, who was not able to be there but is here today, and that's John Cronin, who's here with us. Please stand, John. John has been a huge supporter of this event, and we're so grateful um, for your friendship. He, 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 he kind of went in. He went out. Yeah, okay, maybe yeah. you stand up one more time. Okay, come on, John. Hey, okay, yay! Hey. Hey, Whoa, there it is, there it is. Um, all right, this is awesome. This is a family affair, and we consider all of you all family. But you know this is a family-run newspaper, and I'm excited really to be co-publisher with my husband, Bill Forey. Just came on board, no conflicts. I'm no longer elected, so it's all good. <laughs> That's all. There's a conflict to <laughs> But at this point, um, I want to bring up, you know, my sister-in-law, who is quite incredible, um, and she's done an incredible job, has been part of the company as well. Um, focusing on marketing and communications and advertising. And so want to bring up Maureen Forey Sorrell, who's going to say a few words. Give it up for Maureen, y'all. Hi, everybody. How about our Masters of Ceremonies here? Are they great or are they great? And I don't have to say that just because I'm related to her. It's I wanted to say thank you and welcome to everybody for joining us today. I hope you've all enjoyed your lunch. It's truly an honor to be in the presence of so many who share a deep connection to the Emerald Isle, whether it's through heritage, love of the arts, or an appreciation for the enduring spirit of the Irish people. In this vibrant city of Boston, the Irish heritage has not only survived, but thrived. Our shared history, traditions, and the enduring sense of community are the reasons we come together today. Before we proceed any further, and I think Tim touched on this earlier, but I would like to take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to the incredible musicians who have graced us with their presence today. Thank you, yes, that's right. The music that we've heard, the melodies that have filled this space, are a testament to the rich cultural heritage of Ireland. It's a heritage that has been passed down through generations, and it's one that these musicians have shared with us so generously. So, once again, please join me in giving these remarkable performers, Sean Smith and Kleena Fields, a well-deserved round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> tourism Ireland's impact goes beyond tourism. It fosters connections between nations, promotes cultural exchange, and supports communities. It's a testament to the power of shared experiences, to the idea that by immersing ourselves in the wonders of another culture, we can better understand, appreciate, and connect with one another. My husband Aaron and I 
we're delighted to bring our two children, Nate, who is here today. He's probably on his switch. Um, we brought Nate and, <laughs> and our daughter, Leanna, to Ireland last year. And my daughter, Leanna, is a person living with disabilities. So I was a little nervous about taking her on a trip to Ireland with everything that goes along with um, having a child with mobility problems. But I was delighted to write about our trip uh, as a disability family, which you can read on our website under Boston Irish Travelability, if you're interested. But traveling with a disabled child can indeed be a challenging and nerve-wracking experience. But the unwavering hospitality of the Irish people, combined with the information and support provided by Tourism Ireland, made our trip an incredible adventure. It's not just the stunning sights and experiences that we remember, but it's also the sense of belonging the warmth of the people we encountered, and the feeling that Ireland had just opened its arms to us. So to Tourism Ireland, thank you for being a steadfast and treasured friend of Boston Irish. I have another short video, short message from Tourism Ireland for you now. I would say this, but to me, the Irish are the funniest people in the world. Can you find me, Pearls? Give them to me, OK? <laughs> uh, everyone's a comedian. Any mess? What do you think I am? A juggler? Give me the picture, please. In Ireland, one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is to describe them as a character. Because as every writer knows, it's the characters you remember. Why not do you forgot the story? Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. That's all. And the actress in that promotion, if you don't know her, her name is uh, Sharon Horgan. She's amazing. There's an incredible show on HBO called Bad Sisters. If you've seen it, fabulous. So moving on, thank you to the generous support of Delta Airlines. We have the incredible opportunity to give away two air tickets to Ireland. However, there is an important detail to remember, and that is that you must be present to win. So make sure you stay with us until the very end, as we'll be drawing the lucky winners from among our enthusiastic attendees. It is a fantastic opportunity, and we extend our sincere appreciation to Delta Airlines for making this possible. So stay tuned, enjoy the rest of our program, good luck, and thank you for being with us here today. Thank you, Mo, for sharing um, the experience, and thank you for our, your remarks. Give it up for Maureen again, y'all. I want to recognize real quick some elected officials who are here with us, among us, which is quite exciting. I see Representative Kevin Honan. Where are you, Kevin? All right. I see Representative John Rogers. John, stand up. All right. And I see one of our amazing, amazing electeds who is focused on representing communities, showing up, constituent services, was number one always. And that's our city councilor who is, who is stepping, right, who is not running again for re-election, and that's city councilor Frank Baker. Give it up, you all. We also have our great clerk of courts, John Powers, over here on oh, my left. Oh, very all right. good. All right. Way to go, John. Very good, John. You're up. All right. Here we go. Going. Now. Get the hang of it, right? Let's hear it for Linda. Come on. Ah, she's doing fine. <laughs> you would think it's my first time at the mic. All right. Here we go. Um, now we're going to go into this why we're here today. We're here to celebrate as a family but we're here to recognize incredible individuals and families um, and their connection to Ireland and their leadership and how they've really helped us um, celebrate Irish culture, but also recognizing the amazing contribution of this incredible community, right? That's been here for a long, long time, but came here in the late 1800s when it was not so fun, right? Being an Irish immigrant and yet, Folks thrived, and so we're honored to be here and to present this award. And thank you, Dad, Ed Forey, um, for your vision in creating this amazing award. So I am our next speaker is here to introduce. Yeah, you could clap for Ed. Come on. <laughs> our 
our next speaker is here to introduce us to our first honorees of the afternoon. Paula Plum is an accomplished acting coach, teacher, and theater director. Since 2003, Paula has been the artistic director for WGBH Christmas Celtic Sojourn. A graduate of Boston University's College of Fine Arts, she is a two-time winner of our city's Elliot Norton Award for Best Actress in Sustained Excellence. All right, come on. She's taught at UMass Lowell, Brandeis, and Suffolk University. Please welcome Paula Plum. Hi, everybody. Um, it is my great honor uh, to introduce you to two remarkable artists and personal friends of mine, Karen Jordan and Vincent Crotty. We have been friends and artistic collabor collaborators by virtue of our mutual friend, the late, great Brian O'Donovan. <laughs> and, yes. uh, Brian passed away three weeks ago today, and we are still mourning that immense loss. So, 20 years ago today, or 20 years ago this month, Kier, uh, Brian invited Kieran and me to create a Christmas show with him and his wife, Lindsay, which would become a Christmas Celtic sojourn, a show that grew to embrace communities all over New England for 20 years. Brian's vision was to bring together virtuoso performers and Celtic musicians from all over the world and blend their music and poetry and dance. So, each year for several years, Kieran and I would gather in Brian's kitchen, enjoying Lindsay's brown bread and hot coffee, mulling over the sequencing of the show, deciding which carols for the audience to sing along, what solos for our featured musicians, and how best to incorporate Kieran's lovely Shanos dancing uh, into the choreography of the program, as well as the more familiar step dancing of the Liam Harney dancers, who Kieran also choreographed. Kieran and I worked in happy collaboration for 10 years, slowly building a repertoire and a vocabulary that served us as the creators of this show. By virtue of a Christmas Celtic sojourn, Kieran became the first Irish dancer to put Shano's dance on the stage the first performance and performer of this old style of dance in a theatrical setting. She taught Shano's dance at her Hyde Park dance studio, and her students now teach Shano's all over the country. Shano's, as I have learned from Karen, is the old style of Irish dance that originated in the kitchen and pubs of old Ireland, or as Brian O'Donovan used to say, round the house and mind the dresser. Kieran's bringing that to the stage to live theater was something new. Because of Kieran's love of old style Irish dance, it lives today in Irish American celebrations all over the US. Because of her passion for this dance form and her dedication to Shano's dance, Kieran has illuminated and elevated the traditions of old Ireland. Illumination is the theme here, shedding light on the dance, and with Vincent Crotty, light in darkness. When I was artistic director of A Christmas Celtic Sojourn, Brian O'Donovan and I commissioned Vincent to create multiple paintings for the show, and ultimately, in 2019, asked him to paint an extraordinary 30-foot backdrop of an Irish landscape. Our request was simple that he create a scene of old Ireland, the countryside perhaps by the sea, with a few thatched cottages and, oh yes, we need it to reflect all hours of the day from dawn to midnight. <laughs> Could you possibly paint that? Paint something that looks like both early morning and moonlight on the bay on the same canvas? I mean, this is impossible, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Vincent invented a technique using fluorescent paint and black light to manifest morning, afternoon, and darkest night with the same canvas. So I have to just explain. He used fluorescent paint, and this was a huge experiment. He used fluorescent oranges and yellows to highlight all the pinpoints and tracings of light that are visible in moonlight. 
the tiny candles in cottage windows, the sparkle of stars, the full moon, the filigree of light on the water, the little lights across the bay. So that in natural light, the painting is a serene Irish village by the sea in early morning. But turn out the lights in the theater on a dark stage and shine blue ultralight on the painting and it magically and miraculously transforms to a sweeping vista of stars, candlelight in tiny windows, and the sea shining in moonlight. It was an extraordinary and successful experiment and one of the most exciting moments of creation for our design team in the 20 years of a Christmas Celtic sojourn. Vincent is, well, he is the master of light. Vincent has received many awards and recognitions for his artistry, but I really, really encourage you to treat yourself and visit his website at vincentcrotty.com. Really, take that journey through myriad Irish landscapes, fields, and shorelines, and villages evocative of old Ireland, or delve into the nocturnes, or his urban landscapes. You know, sometimes when I'm just sitting at home working, I will steal a moment and dial up Vincent's website and take a tour through his mysteriously evocative paintings. And what happens when I look, when I see what he is inviting me to see, I am transported to a, a feeling, a personal experience, a story. In his urban landscapes, he has the ability to find the mystery in the ordinary. Um, and how can I ever look at a dumpster in a parking lot the same way? or a South Boston alleyway covered in late afternoon snow. And then visit Vincent's Nocturnes, where I am invited into the night and the darkness is transformed by a single bulb, by moonlight gently falling or a street light startling my gaze on the most surprising shapes, a car, a bent fig figure of an elderly person, the stripe of lamplight on a wet street at midnight. Illuminating in every, every sense of the word is how I experience Vincent's paintings, how his eye directs me to the magic of the everyday or enlightens my experience of nature and both the American and the Irish experience. And now, would you please welcome Vincent Crotty and Karen Jordan. We have the room till six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, everybody, for this amazing award. I'm uh, shocked and I'm delighted. And um, I was just going to go through a few little stories about how I got here and a few reminiscences. So I'm going to go back to 1989. I was with my girlfriend at the time in um, North Cork, up in Kenturk. And I was having a pint with her. And she said, well, we just got me and my sisters and my mom and my brother, we all got green cards. And um, so I said, well, I was shocked. I was, I said, well, I, I might visit you. I wasn't sure if she was the one, but I, I, did, I loved her for sure. <laughs> but I didn't know if I was going to immigrate to America. <clears throat> but um, two nights before I was going to visit her, um, my dad said, well, you know, that's great. You're going for two months. And he said, you can come home to Ireland, but you're not coming home. <laughs> I used to live at home with my parents, and I was a sign painter in a, in the Kentark. I had no competition. I had lots of work, and I was really happy. So um, I had no plan on coming to America. But anyway, I came here, and 
I, I could see that there was art lessons to be had everywhere. And everyone said you had to go down to Ashling Gallery. Um, it had just opened. <laughs> so I, I had set up um, in the, there was a pantry in the house we were staying in. You could take off the shelves. It was about three feet wide, six feet tall. And I started painting. And the second day of being here, I started painting in that little room. And I had already found a store for art supplies. So I was here about a couple of weeks, and I had maybe nine or ten paintings. And I had a, I knew how I had to get two buses down to Ashling Gallery. So I put my nine or ten paintings in a black rubbish bag because it was a, you know, really cold, snowy day. And I walked into John and Maureen, and um, they they were really warm and receptive. And they gave me, uh, John Connolly gave me a hundred dollars to buy art supplies, and that that blew my mind. That was just, I couldn't believe what a warm, welcoming thing that was. And it was more than that. They were going to frame my paintings and put them up for sale. And Maureen was the best person in the whole wide world to do that, and she did that, um, and she's still doing that for the past. 33 years. She's kept me alive. <clears throat> so <clears throat> so uh, I, um, a, f a few months later, I was back with my girlfriend down in Ashling Gallery, and there was a James Joyce reading. It wasn't going too well with my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> she was not a James Joyce fan. <laughs> and she made it very clear. <laughs> to everybody that she wasn't. So um, <clears throat> I kind of sheepishly left that event. And John said, I'd, I would like to go to Milwaukee. I want, I want to bring Irish art to the you know, people all over America. And I, I want you to come with me. So he, he said, um, I'll pick you up in Quincy. And he did. He, he picked me up. I sat into the van. It was loaded with paintings and a, and a booth to co come to the Milwaukee Irish Festival. And I was really excited. I knew the food was going to be, you know, different <laughs> all over the different states. I knew it was going to be a, an exciting adventure. And um, so I sat into the van and John said, well, <clears throat> you're going to have to get rid of that girlfriend. <laughs> he said, she's, she's never going to know you. And you're never going to be an artist with her at the helm. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I was, <laughs> I was a little shocked. <laughs> so he's driving along. <laughs> and the next thing he says, um, well, you, you know, you've wasted your youth. <laughs> you, know, you should have been in an uh, art college at 18. You should have been learning drawing. You're 26. Your youth is gone. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and he said, you have potential, for sure, you have potential. <laughs> but that's all you got, potential. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were driving along, <clears throat> 18 hours to go. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was curious to see what we would have in the, our first meal. And so we, we, we came up to this um, restaurant. <laughs> A big yellow sign, it was a, a <laughs> letter M. <laughs> it was a McDonald's. <clears throat> so that was our first meal on the journey. And um, we, we drove, we, we went as far as we could that night. I knew we were going to stay in a, a nice hotel. So um, we, uh, we got as far as we could, somewhere near Toledo, Ohio. And. Um, so we pulled into the hotel. <clears throat> I noticed it was spelled slightly different. It was motel, not a hotel. <laughs> and I'd never been in a motel in my life. <laughs> so um, I, uh, I, I thought we might you know, have, a, have a meal at the, at the bar or the, the restaurant. <laughs> there was no bar. There was no restaurant. <clears throat> we were sharing a room. And uh, so. We went to the 
we went along to the festival and started showing our paintings. And um, after, after that, we, we came back to Boston and I had a new agenda for myself to, to get some training. I was really appreciative of John Connolly's honesty. And I set about to, to find some training. If I'm going a too long here, tell me to. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Wind it up. We love you. <laughs> OK, so I, 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 got, I became a member of. 13 hours to go. I, sound, I, I signed up for the Museum School of Fine Arts, and I, I got accepted. And it was um, a huge honor. So I went in to, um, to the school, and I just wanted to see what I was heading into. I didn't have the money for it. I was just going on sheer adrenaline, trying to figure out how to get training to be an artist. So I, I, the professor outside in the hallway said, I'm just about to give a critique to my, my students. And, um, if, you, if you'd like to see what kind of work we do, if this school would be a fit for you. Oh, I said, I'd love to see that. So um, they brought me into the classroom for his Saturday morning critique. And I was looking around at each student's work. And it, it, to me, it looked like the remnants of a, a bad motorcycle accident. <laughs> <clears throat> I thought sculpture was clay and stone and all that kind of stuff. But there was none of that going on here. And there was a, I looked out in the halls with the painting department and the drawing department, and that didn't look much better. <laughs> and uh, I, so I met another professor uh, in the graphic, depart graphic department, and I said, I'm, this work doesn't, I don't like it. <laughs> and I don't know why, is there something wrong with me? He and he said, no, there's nothing wrong with you. He said, some people like classical music, some people like folk music. So why don't you go down to the Cambridge School of Adult Education? He said, you need to learn the bones and the muscles, and you need to take a class called life drawing. So, um, so I, I signed up, and he said it'll be one-tenth of the cost. So I signed up for this life drawing class at the Cambridge School of Adult Education. Uh, and I, I remember, well, it was in January, and there was 12 students and the teacher hadn't walked in yet, but oh, I had no, ex no idea what to expect. But the, one of the women beside me, she took off her shoes. <clears throat> then she took off her socks. <laughs> and anyway, it was a cold, a cold winter's night. And next thing, she took off her jeans. <laughs> and uh, she took off everything. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I, <laughs> coming from North Cork. <laughs> I wasn't used to this. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, th that was my f that was my introduction to drawing from life, and it was f the first time in my life I was going in the right direction. But uh, uh, thank you to John Connolly for lighting the fire, uh, um, and thank you. All right. For a country boy from Kanturk, he's a tough act to follow. <laughs> and the award for best supporting actor goes to John Connolly from the <laughs> Ashland Gallery. <laughs> but I'm just gonna share briefly just a few of my own words. Um, first of all, to use a wonderful Irish expression, Vincent and I are both gobsmacked to be receiving this award and humbled to be in the company of Governor Healy and Jim Rooney, so con congratulations to them and their families. And thank you to my mother, Dolores, and my sister, Elizabeth, and our table of dear friends who all traveled to be with us today. For me, Irish dancing has been part of my life for 44 years. My dad, Dick Jordan, carried on a proud family connection to Ireland, handed down from his immigrant grandfather to his mother, to me and my sisters. When I started Irish dancing, it was still a folky kind of activity. There were no wigs and fake tan. And it was um, the kind of thing where we would go to folk festivals as a family on the weekends, feshes and kaylees that really felt like family and community events. And I loved being part of that climate. Over the years, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the pageantry has come into Irish dancing, along with intense competition 
and some of the drawbacks of that, like favoritism and sometimes harsh teaching practices. I was determined when I started teaching Irish dancing more than 20 years ago to foster a non-competitive environment that was joyful and welcoming with a focus on adult learners. And so I've been teaching the older styles of Irish dance, the Shano styles, to adults of all ages in the Boston area for more than two decades. But in my personal life, Irish dance and traditional Irish music have always been a place of joy and comfort for me, a way of reconnecting to myself in a deep way. They have sustained me through t challenging times and guided my way creatively and professionally. They've allowed me to travel and make friendships around the world. They've brought me connection and healing. I want to acknowledge Ed Forey, who has always been a great supporter of both of our work. I was employed by Ed many years ago, just as I was graduating from Boston College. He hired me as a columnist for the Boston Irish Reporter newspaper and gave me great freedom in writing about my passions for traditional Irish music and dance. But I had such, such a strong calling to follow my heart in dance, so I left the journalism job to embark on the pre precarious path of self-employment as a performing and teaching artist. Before I did, though, there was one day when Ed and I were coming back to the office in Dorchester after a function in Boston, and we made a lunch stop at the Star Market on the Morrissey Boulevard in Dorchester. And there we had an accidental or serendipitous meeting with Vincent Crotty, and that is how I met my husband, in the checkout lane <laughs> at Star Market. So Vincent and I are always grateful to Ed for that. I want to acknowledge someone who has really shaped our world here in Boston for the last 25 years, and that's Brian O'Donovan. He was a personal friend and a longtime collaborator to both of us, a fellow cork man to Vincent, a role model to me, and his recent death leaves a giant hole in Boston and in our lives. I want to thank Paula for her beautiful words and for being with us today. We worked together very closely on a Christmas Celtic sojourn, bringing Brian's vision to life. Brian understood my vibe, my aesthetic as an Irish dancer, and gave me many, many opportunities to share that with audiences and to grow my art and my business that way. And finally, this Irish community that we have in Boston blows us away over and over again, especially with how people lift each other up in tough times. When I got very sick with a complicated case of Lyme disease six years ago, Irish music friends of mine started a GoFundMe to help with medical expenses that were not covered by insurance. I'd say most of the money that came into that GoFundMe campaign was due to Ed Forey and Brian O'Donovan, who used their media outlets and their social media platforms repeatedly to share my story and seek support. And that was game changing for us at the time. We will always be grateful. So it feels very good to be able to say thank you publicly to Ed and the Forey family and to get, dedicate our award today in the memory of Brian O'Donovan. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent and KJ. Give it up for them again. And who said 26 wasn't youthful? Come on. Yeah. That's great determination. Go ahead. Don't, don't worry, Governor. It just gets longer from here. So we're, 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 we're all set. No, great, great job. Let's hear it again for these guys. Huh? Really well done. Um, so I now get to present the um, I, Boston Irish Honors Family Award to the 2023 Boston Irish Honors Family, the, my friends, the Roonies. Um, yeah, let's hear it for the Rooney family. You know, as I, as I was listening to, to these guys, I was like, man, I should have did like a page for every brother or something, because this is really short. Um, you know, there were 12 boys in, in, in the Rooney family, and, and I, I should point out, you know, m most of you know that Hunt is not here. She's fine. She's, you know, sitting out in the driveway in her chair, wishing well to all the passerby. So if you're in the neighborhood, go by and say hello. Um, but there, there were there were 12 boys, so they, they were a football team and, and one one alternate. And you know, sadly, you know, Charlie left us much much too early. And he's a he's a big presence in the in the Rooney life, um, in, in on Gate Street where where these guys grew up. 
So, you know, in the neighborhood, it's always been the 11 brothers, right? You never mess with a Rooney because you mess with one, you, you mess with them all. And, you know, it, it's really about, you know, what type of family that they are. And if you had the opportunity to read the, the column on the Rooney family, you know, Hun always had, Peggy, Hun Rooney always had, it's so funny, you just fall into vernacular of, of the people you know, but Hun would always say, you know, we'll find a way, and, and, and she did. And, you know, Fred and, and Hun, you know, brought these boys into our life, our community's life, our Irish life. And each and every one of them is a good, solid Irish man. And how do you do that? You know, I, I think you only need, again, to, to read the column and, and you know that we'll find a way. You know, the Rooney family always find a way. So, you know, Buddy, Jimmy, Michael, Tommy, Jackie, Paul, Mark, Larry, Joe, Jay, and Chris, right? They all found a way to be good men, good husbands, good fathers, brothers, uncles, nephews, and above all, brothers. Brothers who have each other's back. When the chips are down, for one, the pain was felt by the other 10. And they would gravitate to the one in need and they would find a way. They would find a way to lift that brother up, to be there for their mom and their dad, Fred, who sadly passed. You know, and I was going to come up and talk about how, you know, three went to Harvard and one to Columbia and one, you know, and it doesn't, it really, it doesn't matter because it doesn't make them who they are as people. I know a lot of Harvard folks who, you know, I see them coming across the street, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know who you are. I, I, but I did have the great fortune to, of working with um, or four, three, three of the brothers, and they, they were, and all eleven are great in their own way, and you know, and I, I believe that that is because they have taken what what Fred and Hun have taught them and put it put it to use, you know, put their own spin on it and, and put it to use. They found their way. They've never forgotten where they've come from. They're truly all for one and one for all. You know, I know, I know Fred is, is looking down and he could not be more proud of the men you have all become. And Charlie's with them and saying the same thing. You know, because there's 12 Rooney boys, boys, 12 Rooney men, all of whom are just, I'm telling you, top shelf in so many ways that you can't list them because there's 11 of them, would be here all night. But it does give me a great, great honor to, to represent the gentleman who's going to speak on behalf of the Rooney family, my pal Jimmy Rooney. Come on up, Jim. They're all coming up. All of them? The Rooney brothers come up. We're all Rooney brothers. Up. Come on. Oh, come on up. Come on up. Let's keep on clapping, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want this tea? Or? Is yeah, I'll grab it. Don't worry about it. Don't leave it. But I have my own. And we'll get more license want? plates, too. There's only one. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> we need to get more. Uh, where do you want us? Right there. Okay, right. wait. No, they don't have their thing. They oh, you need the yeah, Here. No. Oh. Ah. Okay. Oh. One license plate. We'll get more. All right. When, when Linda handed me that, I thought it might be my inmate number. Um, well, um, thank you for that introduction, Tom, and just uh, to clear a few things up. Uh, this is all off the record, right? Oh, 100%. It's a safe place. And it's lunch, so it's G-rated, I'm imagining. We're going to find out. <laughs> um, well, let me begin by thanking the Fiori family. Ed, Bill, and Linda, Maureen. Um, uh, Billy, uh, uh, God bless you. That's all I have to say, oh, Billy. Come on. <laughs> come on, Jimmy, you're my guy. Uh, and congratulations on 40 years um, with the Dorchester Reporter. Um, it's, uh, 
it's not just a newspaper, it's an essential um, in, in Dorchester, so congratulations on that. Um, Dusty Rhodes, uh, fresh off of New England Council and, and here today. Dusty's been telling me I have two to three minutes to speak for about 30 years now, Benson, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, and congratulations to Vincent and Karen. Um, what an inspirational uh, story they are and proud to share the, the podium with you. Uh, and of course, my friend, Governor Mara Healy. Um, pleasure to have worked with you for so many years on so many issues important to the Commonwealth, including now, and we continue to have a lot of work to do. Look forward to doing that. Um, I only have about 20 family members with me here today, so uh, about a third of what we would consider to be immediate family. Um, <laughs> As, as Tom said, uh, my mom, also known as Peg or Hun, uh, is 90, uh, didn't feel up to it today, uh, but she's doing fine. Still sharp, remembering everything as though it were yesterday, but my brothers and I wish that she would forget a few things. <laughs> um, you know, the first thing that uh, people normally say when they hear about the 11 brothers is your mother must be an angel, and she is. The second is, how did they do it? Um, that's a much longer conversation, but in summary, it was hard work and sacrifice for us, for us. And just to put it in context, over five decades, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, they had a boy or boys growing up in Southie that were under the age of 18. Um, so think about, uh, think about the sleepless nights that they must have had. Um, my mother, Hun, worked nights in check processing at the old Columbia Point Bank facility, um, but before she left for work, we were fed. She went to work, and when we get up in the morning, our clothes were ready for school, and our lunch boxes were packed. And somehow she squeezed in sleep whenever she could. Uh, with no education beyond high school, she went on, uh, as Bill Kennedy referenced, to become the director of legislative data processing up the State House, uh, where they processed all the bills, amendments, and records of the legislature. Now, back in those days, and even today, um, when I push legislation, I would tell the elected officials, uh, and my friend Bill Kennedy, who worked with Speaker Fennerman, uh, that if I didn't get what I wanted, I would just have my mother change the language anyway. <laughs> Um, my father, Fred, worked in the trucking industry, always had a second job, a side hustle, I guess it's known today, um, and with five children, got his college degree at Northeastern University. Um, my dad became quite an expert at fixing broken windows uh, on Gate Street, uh, because uh, I think we broke a window in just about every house from street hockey pucks and stickball games um, that we played out on the street. And it was only years later that we admitted to my father that not all of those broken windows were accidents. <laughs> um, but I think, I think the answer to the key to how my mother did it is that um, she had this red wiffle ball bat with a talent for hitting that spot right on the back of your thighs that would sting the most. We all thought we were good athletes, but she had the best swing in the house. <laughs> Um, the third question we often get is, did your mother have a favorite? And I answer that question in two ways. My brother Chris, who's not here, um, he's off uh, refereeing an NHL hockey game in New Jersey tonight, and my mother will be watching on TV, not to watch the players, but to watch the referees skate by. Um, but Chris, because he's the baby, um, and my brothers Jackie and Michael, because they're the most needy. <laughs> Um, I know I was not the favorite because if you asked her, she would tell you I was the worst baby and I cried for a whole year. <laughs> the truth is, um, there is no one who is more full of love for all her boys and always seemed to know which one needed a little more love or a little more prayer from time to time. A recognition like this celebrating Irish heritage in general and for today the connections to Ireland of our family certainly causes you to reflect on that history and journey of our parents and grandparents. A history that involved poverty, poverty oppression, hardship, but with the determination to find a way 
to make life better for their children and grandchildren. And like many Boston Irish families, that's our story. Leaving Ireland to escape poverty and oppression, our family was exclusively from the west side of the Republic, from the counties of Mayo and Galway. But as many of you know, and as is well documented, they arrived in Boston often unwelcome uh, and to experience more oppression from the old Yankees. As heavy as we think the world is today with political divisiveness, international conflict, mass shootings, and our own personal hardships, certainly our ancestors felt the heaviness and the weight of their own times. But amidst all of that, my family leaned on the support from other families from Ireland like them, found the opportunities that they were looking for in this great city and remarkable country, realized the rewards of hard work, and discovered humanity from others. That humanity from outside of their own clan was offered to my grandparents in the early part of the 20th century through World War I into the Great Depression right here in Boston. Like many young Irish women, my grandmother Delia Waldman left the village of Nock in County Mayo as a teenage girl and worked as a housemaid for a Jewish family in Brookline. In addition to a few dollars each week, some of life, some life guidance, that family she worked for, knowing she had no parents in this country and that they couldn't afford it, decided to pay for my grandmother's modest wedding to my grandfather, Michael Corliss. Years later, Delia and Michael would have five children, including their youngest, our mother, Margaret, or Peggy. They lived down around C and Fifth Street in the Irish enclave of the lower end of South Boston and a house that was later taken to build the D Street housing projects before they moved up to Gate Street. There was a corner store down in the lower end owned by a husband and wife named Sidney and Bessie. Like many Irish immigrant families at the time, they would get their groceries each day and pay Sydney when the paycheck came on Friday. My mother tells the story often, but she remembers well being sent to the store as a young girl for bread or butter with instructions from my grandmother to tell Sydney she'll pay him on Friday. Of course, they couldn't always pay on Friday. And Sydney noticed that my grandmother wasn't getting her usual items. So Sydney told Delia in a firm Jew Jewish voice that she should never let her five kids go hungry, whether she could pay them or not, and from time to time gave her the food she needed. To us, my brothers and me, that's the kind of humanity we were taught. <clears throat> Seeing the heaviness of the world being experienced by others. And we could all give you hundreds of examples to this day that my mother has paid it forward with the kindness that she experienced from Sydney and other people in our lives. And it's also perhaps a lesson for all of us today. My brothers and I could share many stories growing up as grandchildren of Irish immigrants in which we were taught by our parents and grandparents the responsibilities we had not, to just, not, to each other, not just to each other, but to our clan and the world around us. So if we have represented our Irish heritage well, worked hard and accomplished things in our lives that have caused us to be considered for recognition like this today, you need look no further than the lessons in humanity, appreciation for opportunity, hardship, hard work, and life guidance from our parents and grandparents to understand why. And maybe experiencing the red wiffle ball bat when we needed it wasn't too bad either. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> Former City Councilor Jerry McDermott in the back. Jerry. Okay, Yay. Jerry. There All right. Thank you again to the Rooney family. Um, beautiful words. Um, and now we're going to recognize an amazing leader in our Commonwealth, you know, our governor, Governor Maura Healy, who's been doing an incredible job, and we're just so proud. And I'm here to bring up someone to the stage. Um, the next to bring up the next speaker. 
so who has been one of my great friends and advisors throughout my career, and that's Senator Ed Markey. Um, <laughs> Senator Markey has championed so many causes that we care about in this room, and he has always shows, he shows up when we need him. So please welcome Senator Ed Markey, everyone. Thank you, Linda, so much, and to you, and to Billy, and to Maureen, and to Eddie. Thank you for putting all of us in this room. Um, I met Eddie many, many years ago in Lions Cafeteria at Boston College, and he is Dorchester, you know? And, um, uh, and we all know that the highest honor is just to say, originally from Dorchester, right? Uh, and many people um, have that as a badge of honor. But Eddie would say to me in the cafeteria, just never forget this wisdom, Eddie, to me. You know, you're born a Democrat and a Red Sox fan, then you're baptized Catholic seven days later. Just remember what Boston is all about. And his family does represent the diversity of our city. Eddie never forgot where he came from, but he always knew where we had to go at the same time. And that's why, Eddie, you are so much, you know, the spirit, the, the conscience of the city. And we thank you for bringing all of us here uh, together. Um, it's my absolute honor to introduce our next awardee. Um, the first two awardees, Vincent Crotty and Karen Jordan, congratulations uh, to the Rooney family. That's absolutely incredible. All of our jaws were dropped for the entirety of that uh, presentation. Um, Senator Paul Kirk, um, uh, it's a great honor for me to uh, introduce our next awardee. Governor Mara Healy exemplifies what it means to be a powerful Irish woman, which is about the most redundant statement which you can make. <laughs> Mara's ancestors must be so proud. From counties Kerry to Cork to County Galway, Irish eyes are smiling today as Mara Tracy Healy is honored for her commitment to justice, to equity, to inclusion, to fairness, and to making lasting changes in our communities. She is an historic barrier breaker who represents the ultimate combination of competency, courage, and compassion to lead us through this unprecedented time. She has been the people's lawyer, and now she is the people's governor. And she always leads the way. On juvenile justice, she leads the way. She created the Game Change Program to reach our youth in a unique and engaging way and support communities in most need for positive intervention, giving them the tools they need to survive and to break the cycle of violence. On climate justice, Mara leads the way. She is committed to making Massachusetts a Green New Deal state and has put a plan in place in Massachusetts to make us as green as the rolling hills of Ireland. Perhaps in this regard, Ireland is a source of inspiration for Mara, as there is no more beautiful place to emulate. On economic justice, Mara leads the way in her proposed budget. She makes critical investments in our future. The Massachusetts Rental Voucher Program will add 750 new vouchers for low-income tenants and provide $37 million for home base to connect emergency assistance eligible families with more permanent housing opportunities. The Healy administration has also vowed to make community colleges free to all residents over the age of 25, giving them hope and a vision for the future, providing a lifeline and renewed chance to achieve the American dream as all of us in this room have been able to achieve. We know her as elected leader, but to her family, she is a beloved daughter, aunt, cousin, partner, and friend, and a feared opponent on the basketball court. <laughs> Mara, in this room, 
you are our modern day Saint Bridget, the only woman patron saint of Ireland. And as you are the only woman elected governor in the history of the state of Massachusetts. And <laughs> you are our patron saint. Uh, and uh, St. Bridget had a prayer. Uh, and I think you are the embodiment of that St. Bridget prayer. You were a woman of peace. You brought harmony where there was conflict. You brought light to the darkness. You brought hope to the downcast. So may the mantle of your peace cover those who are troubled and anxious, and may peace be firmly rooted in all of our hearts and in this world at this time. I give you our great governor, Mara Healy. So much. My goodness, Senator Markey. Um, in the litany of things, he didn't, um, he didn't mention that I was a sister. And I don't know if that's because Caitlin and Tara are here and got his ear before, before that. I also like the reference to Bad Sisters because uh, it is a show we enjoy. Um, and, um, and as for the patron saint, obviously there are parts of my biography, Senator, that you're not uh, fully aware of. So we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But that sounds good. Father Hearn's given me all sorts of absolution today. So <laughs> I appreciate the luncheon placement when it came to the seating. Um, seriously, Senator Markey, thank you so much for your kind words. And more than that, thank you for being such a great friend, such a great friend to the Boston Irish community, such a great friend to Massachusetts um, on so, so many fronts. And so it's an honor to be able to work and serve alongside you. Um, in the things that, that we all care about. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaking of basketball, he still holds the Congress record for the most free throws made in a row. Little known fact, Ed Markey. Um, to the Forey family, to, to Ed, to Linda, we worked together over the years on many fronts, and I certainly learned a lot from you. Um, through that time, and it's great to see you and be with you again on a stage celebrating something so positive. And to Ed and to your family, everything that was said about you and the contributions that you've made to Boston and Greater Boston, and certainly to the Irish American community, are so meaningful. And I also really appreciated the comment about the ways in which your family has always opened its heart and uh, its mind uh, to, to to others and allowed others in and promoted that. And I just really, really appreciate it. So I am incredibly honored to be here <clears throat> this year as a recipient of this award um, and to recognize and celebrate the contributions of journalism and the contributions of storytelling and important narrative keeping uh, that you and your family advance. And uh, I'm hardly worthy as I looked around the room at those who stood or tried not to stand, the past recipients of this award, it truly is, uh, is something to be here. I want to thank the luncheon co-chairs, uh, Bill Kennedy and Brendan Feeney, of course. I mentioned, um, I mentioned Linda, Tom, thank you so much, doing a wonderful job as always, uh, great public servants and, and more. Uh, so many elected officials were here earlier and, and rightly recognized. It's been great to serve alongside so many of you. We'll miss others of you as you go on to greener pastures and uh, less acrimony, perhaps. Uh, lucky you. 
Um, and, and also, I know that we have our Vice Council General for New England, Paul Rooney, here. We look forward to welcoming our new Council General, Sheila Fitzgerald, to the State House very soon. I think we've, we've set that up. I wanted to begin by acknowledging the other honorees today to listen to Vincent and Karen speak and to think about all that you have contributed to arts, to culture, when you think about things that really knit together community and, and society, these are such important, important things. And we're so lucky to have you as people who furthered that, who opened up so many people's eyes to those things, gave them an appreciation. And I just thank you for the work uh, that you have done over the, over the years and, you know, um, your, your work continues to learn, live on in the work of others, because I know you have inspired and brought along so many people, um, uh, and, um, and maybe not with quite the same approach that John Conley used, um, but nevertheless, uh, uh, very, very effective. Um, so I wish you all the best and continued success. And of course, to the Rooney family, it's such uh, an incredible incredible story. I, my mom mom is here and, and she raised the five of us alone for a good number of years. And I do come from a family of particularly strong women. Uh, but I think about um, I think about your mom and you know the work she did. It's truly incredible. And the work that you have all done with one another to hold each other together, because family's tough. And a lot of things can happen in the course of a lot of things do happen in the course of, of, uh, of, of all our lives as family, and good times, bad times, really trying times. And I think it, you know, we should all leave here today feeling really affirmed about what family is. Um, you know, the family you're born into, the family that you bring along and create, and how powerful that is. And so I found it incredibly moving. And Jim, you know, we do. We talk about a lot of things and a lot of important policy issues, but I have to say today, was um, uh, the most inspired, I, I think you're very inspiring, but today was the most inspired, seriously, I, I've ever heard you uh, speak, and it was incredibly powerful and, and, and moving. So, you know, thank you to the whole Rooney family for, for your many contributions over the years, and, and many more to come uh, with all those Rooneys out there. So, um, great friends, great leaders, as I look around this room today, um, all of whom have excelled in so many different fields and industries and endeavors and in your communities, making Boston the strong place that it is. And I am honored to be here today because, of course, my Irish roots are important to me. My dad's folks were from Kerry and Cork. And in fact, recently, um, relatives came to the State House from Kilgarvin. They'd actually found the old, <clears throat> excuse me, you can tell it's Friday, the end of the week. I talk too much, I've been talking all week. Um, but these folks came from Kilgarvin to the State House to present me with a portrait of my grandfather's ancestral home. And I was just so, so moved by that and so moved by the recognition of the connection between Ireland and America, and in particular, between Ireland and Boston. So dad's, um, dad's there was from, from uh, Kilgarvin. He came over here and ended up working in the post office in, in Newburyport. Um, my, my grandmother, his wife, uh, came from Cork, actually, and she found her way also to Newburyport and ended up uh, as a house cleaner, which is what, what often was the case. And uh, together they, they raised my dad, who's, who's since passed on. Um, but we spent a lot of time with them and, and great times with them, hearing so much about their Irish experience. On my mother's side, my great-grandmother, Catherine Tracy, um, was somebody who I knew for many, many years, well into actually my 20s. I feel very, very fortunate to have known my great-grandmother, who left Ballinasloe. She was, I don't know, I think the third of five, and she finally got to the age, her mother had died, and she finally, the, little, the littles were old enough so that her dad said she could go to America. And you know, for some reason or another, the person who was supposed to meet her in New York did not show up, so she was sent by others and directed to Boston, and that, that's how I'm here. So I'm, I'm very glad to that person who didn't show up, I guess, that day. Um, 
But, uh, you know, she too worked in several people's homes here in Boston and then eventually up in, in, in Newburyport. And my mother made a particular point of making sure that all of us kids were in touch with all of our cousins in Ireland. I could always tell how the economy was doing, you know, depending on the number of cousins who were coming here and, you know, becoming <clears throat> electricians or the, or the ones who were deciding to stay, right? And it's gone back and forth over the years. But our connections with our, our Irish cousins uh, remain deep. Uh, Irish weddings, we've been to them. They are uh, quite something. Um, uh, and uh, and, uh, and just, uh, just so, so powerful. And I have to say that what I learned from my grandparents um, guides me still in, in who I am. The lessons of hard work, of taking care of one another, of taking care of family, of being part of, of community. I also think that for all of us Irish, there's something in our spirit about resilience. And if you don't have a sense of humor, like you're in deep trouble. So for this gig, I'm particularly appreciative of my Irish ancestors because I, I need to draw upon resilience from time to time in this, uh, in, this, in this job. Earlier this year, I was able to visit Ireland. And I've been to Ireland many times before with family, but this was particularly special. I was invited to address the Shened on the 60th anniversary of President Kennedy's visit, as well as the 30th anniversary of the decriminalization of gay life in, in Ireland. And I had the opportunity to meet with leaders in Irish government, convened with business leaders in Ireland and Massachusetts business and leaders in Wales to talk about what we can further for economic development. Um, but I just, you know, amidst all of what was happening, I just had to sort of step back and, and breathe it in for a minute, which I was finally able to really do at the presence of um, Ambassador Claire Cronin's. Uh, um, she's got a little, a nice spot over there. Um, <laughs> if you ever, or, or, you should drop by. Um, and just sitting there with, with Ambassador Cronin, sort of taking it all in and thinking about and reflecting on our family's history and you know, how the heck did we ever end up where we ended up? And so I am grateful each day for the opportunity, the privilege to serve people here in the state, the privilege to work alongside all of you. And I am very, very grateful to my Irish grandparents who one way or another uh, came to Massachusetts, found themselves here and uh, provided and really set the foundation for all that was to come. So. Um, God bless you for all that you do. Again, Ed, Linda, the Forey family, thank you for the time you take, not just in the day-to-day -day covering the important events, but taking the time to recognize and lift up the stories of those who have contributed to and continue to further Irish excellence in the heritage, what it represents, what it represents by an event like this each year. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and thank you again for this incredible privilege and honor. Our great director of Massport is here, Lisa Whalen. Say hi yes, to Lisa. Yes, Lisa, yes. Oh, come on, knock it off. Say hi to Lisa. I know you're all like, have some place to go. No, Vincent, and you can't have any more time. Was he? <laughs> wants That's to wrong. finish something. No. <laughs> Had another thought. We have the award, though. Please, wait. we have the awards, and we're going to do group pictures as well. But before we do that, and also going to bring up Delta, no, yes, I am, um, I want to recognize some moms um, who are here among us as part of the honors group. So KJ's mom, Karen Jordan's mom, Dolores is here from Philadelphia. Thank you for being here with us. We have Governor Maura Healy's mom, Tracy's here, thank you so much for being here. And obviously Mrs. Rooney, who we love, who could not be here, but we have some bouquets to give to those that are here, and we're gonna give it to you to give it to your mom, okay? So that never would be awesome. Ne she's never ever gonna see it. I'll, I'll bring it back. Okay. <laughs> but now we'd like to welcome to the stage, so now everyone, remember you have to be in the room 
to win these tickets, okay? So we're gonna bring up to this stage Charlie Shuey um, of Delta Airlines to join us up here as we make someone's Friday even better today. Isn't that exciting? Ooh, that's right. With the drawing of two round tickets, two round trip tickets um, to Ireland on Delta Airlines. And remember, you have to be here, so text your friends if they went, you know, maybe you took a break, but they gotta be here. Here we go. Okay. Don't do it, Linda. Don't do it. Oh, no, you're drawing. Okay. Mix it up, though. Mix it up. Who's ready to go to Dublin? <laughs> Who's ready to go to Dublin? Go. Two really nice seats. Very nice seats going to Dublin. Daily service. The winner is... Oh. I don't know how to say it. A-Wife? Griffin. Griffin. Aoife. Aoife Griffin. Where's Aoife? Aoife Griffin. Thank you, Charlie, so much. Aoife, Aoife, right? Aoife? This is for wow. the Red Sox event. We're going to do the, oh. the tour, a game to be That's named true. later. You get to go with Tom Kennedy to see if they'll win. I don't know. Okay. No, I'm not touching it. What? Okay, who's drawing it? Yeah, give it to me. Give it to me. Okay, good. Just do it. Thomas Timlin. No. Michael Kenevy. Oh, Michael! <laughs> yes! Congratulations! <laughs> hey, while well, we have awesome. your attention, we want to thank some of our sponsors, Tourism Ireland, Eversource Energy over here, uh, the Boston Red Sox, Corcoran Jenison, Paul and Mrs. Kirk, thank you very much. Absolutely want to recognize, thank you for sponsoring the Cronin Group, Carol Advertising, National Grid, Air Lingus, The Drew Company, UMass Boston, and Bob and Jean Sheridan. Thank you all. This is awesome. We want to thank you all for the support today. And again, would love to thank, thank the team of Conventures led by Dusty Rhodes. Thank you, Dusty, and your team for a job well done. Thank Rachel and Kara and the whole team, and obviously want to recognize the folks here at the seaport for providing us with this amazing meal and the incredible staff. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to now introduce Father Jack O'Hearn, the pastor at St. Gregory's in Dorchester for our benediction, and we're gonna get you out of here. Give it up to Father Jack Father O'Hearn, Jack. my priest. By the way, I have St. Gregory's yeah. in the house. <laughs> When the senator invoked uh, St. Bridget, I was wondering if he was going to tell us the legend that she was able to turn water, not into wine, but into beer. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord God, love of us all, the beauty of this day has been made more glorious by this gathering this afternoon. It is good for us to be here. Today we have celebrated all that is Irish, and we have acknowledged the special lifetime achievements of individuals and families who exemplify the very best of our Irish values, legacies, and traditions. We honor and celebrate their exemplary endeavors in the arts, government, public service, and community leadership. In many ways, our honorees have remained connected to their Irish roots and honor their forebears by exhibiting compassion, respect, and generosity to people of all backgrounds who have followed their lead in carving out a life and a new land. And recognizing their contributions, the contributions of the Irish diaspora here in Boston, I hope that as in telling their stories, we might propel and inspire our fellow Bostonians, no matter their place of birth, to leap to establish their homes and make their contributions in this, the most Irish of American cities, in this, the greatest country in the world. May God bless our honorees, their families, and friends, and indeed all of us with his friendship and peace. Sloan Mork Chara, safe, safe home, my friends. Thank you, Father. Once again, if you received an award on my right, y'all left is a, uh, a step and repeat. Please make your way over there for some photos.